This is News 3 Now at 6. More than two-thirds of Wisconsin counties have certified the results of last week's presidential election. The deadline is November 17th. All counties must finish the work before President Trump can request a recount, and he has said he will. Unofficial results show Joe Biden defeated Trump by about 20,500 votes in Wisconsin. 49 counties have submitted their canvas results to the Wisconsin Elections Commission. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss wants to make sure of something. Elections of leaders are already promising. There were no major issues with counting ballots. Well, Speaker Voss hasn't presented any evidence of fraud, but Amy Reid is live to tell us why he thinks it investigation is even necessary. Amy? Speaker Voss said it's unlikely the investigation would change the results, but he wants to look into it anyway, even though there is no evidence. I would rather guarantee that everyone at the end of the day has certainty that the election was conducted fairly because we do a thorough investigation as opposed to trusting a bunch of bureaucrats in Madison saying, look, we did it just fine. Despite Assembly Speaker Robin Voss's concerns, clerks across the state have affirmed they conducted the election lawfully and they have a paper trail to prove it. There's multiple wards, I think. So. After triple checking at the municipal level, county clerks are now doing the same. The results are largely unchanged. Biden with a net gain of 157 votes, according to AP. Voss said he wants real evidence for the investigation. We're not going to do some kind of a, you know, a, a hunt based on, uh, you know, what happened in other states or those kind of things. We have to see real evidence in Wisconsin. So if there is real evidence, I want it to come forward and be able to be investigated. If there's not, it just validates the process and people should be fully supportive of that. He said he's looking at having a joint committee, one with members of the Assembly and Senate, to do that. To experts in elections, the results are already being validated now as part of the standard process. The the Elections Commission has said and continues to say the election was conducted lawfully and there is no credible information to cast doubt on the unofficial results. A WEC statement adds, when issues are reported to our office, we take them very seriously. We look into each allegation and request evidence from parties involved. At this time, no evidence has been provided that supports allegations of systemic or widespread election issues. The Elections Commission also said that voters can trust that their vote was counted even if it hasn't shown up on the My Vote website yet. Remember that data is inputted manually and by law clerks have up to 45 days to do that. Amy Reid reporting on Amy, thank you. Clear tonight, but there's more rain in our forecast. Let's check your first foreign forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Well, the bulk of that rain really won't arrive until the weekend. In the short term, things will be pretty quiet around here. Let's start out by taking a look at the live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison. It was a sunny day today, although temperatures were more in line with what we'd expect for this time of year. Some light snow up in the northern portion of Minnesota and North Dakota. That's our next weather system that could bring us a chance for a rain or snow shower tomorrow evening. As we look at high temperatures today, they're much more in line with what we'd expect for the uh, early part of November. Right now, uh, 44 for the high temperature in Madison. Janesville hit 45. And current temperatures are in the middle 30s to around 40 degrees. Madison, one of the warmer temperatures around at 40. As we check out the day planner for tomorrow, look for a low temperature of 30 by tomorrow morning with clear skies overnight. Tomorrow, look for partly sunny skies and a pleasant day with a high of 52. Temperatures will turn colder for Friday, and then we'll see the rain chances move in for the weekend. More details in the forecast in a few minutes. A Wisconsin family found out four weeks ago today their son was killed at Devil's Lake State Park. Tonight, it seems we are no closer to knowing who did it. Adam Duxter was at a press conference today where police shared what little they could. It's been almost a month since someone took 24-year-old John Schmutzer's life. The John was generous and always willing to be a friend to anyone. The John was kind and always willing to help, always with a smile on his face. Police speaking in place of his grieving family. Tonight, they're asking for any help finding who might have done this. What we want to get out there is that somebody out there knows who's this, who this person is, or they suspect who this person is. And we need their uh, information. We need them to call us. Lieutenant Chris Zunker did not have a lot of specific information on a suspect, but says whoever did this could be dealing with a mental illness and now be a threat to themselves or someone else. Police say what they do know is that Schmutzer was hiking alone along Grotto's Trail on the lake's south side around the time he was killed. Now they're asking anyone else who might have been in this place at that time to give them a call. We are confident that there is someone out there who knows or suspects they know who this person is 
and we await their call. They say the more tips they get, the faster they can find that person and offer the Schmutzer family some long-awaited peace. Please, help us identify this individual and bring closure for John's family who've lost their warm, kind, thoughtful, generous, and bright son. Anyone with information or tips should call the Sauk County Crime Stoppers, and we have that number on our website, channel3000.com. To our coronavirus headlines now, 46% of Wisconsin's total cases were confirmed now within the past month. Also in that last month, more than 1,000 Wisconsinites died due to COVID-19. Almost 7,000 new cases confirmed today. State health officials say only 10% of the state's hospital beds remain available. Now to illustrate just how severe our situation is here in Wisconsin, DHS officials have added a new critically high category to their disease activity tracker. 65 of Wisconsin's 72 counties are showing critically high COVID-19 activity. DHS officials say this category indicates how alarming the spread is. The critically high category nearly three times higher than the very high category that we were seeing as the top benchmark in the past. UW Health Chief Quality Officer Dr. Jeff Pothoff tells us medical professionals want to see state leaders increase compliance with COVID-19 mitigation measures that have been proven to help slow the spread. I think when we look at different uh, regions and their response to the pandemic, uh, one thing that we've learned, and we are probably the poster child of it, uh, is that you know um, coming up with recommendations that are essentially voluntary, people can choose to follow them or not, uh, in the context of so much in misinformation out there, uh, is not leading to an effective response to the pandemic. Uh, we have too many people getting sick and uh, too many people dying. Dr. Pothoff says as much as we want to have freedom, decisions that individuals make are affecting our community and our entire state. He mentions this is the same reason we have laws against drunk driving and laws requiring seatbelts to protect the individuals involved, but also those who are not involved. UW-Madison will begin offering free COVID-19 rapid testing to community members. These tests can deliver results in as little as 15 minutes. Testing will be available beginning tomorrow at Nielsen Tennis Stadium by appointment only. We have a link to register for an appointment on channel 3000 com right now the university can provide 50 community tests per day but plans to increase their capacity to 500 tests per day just like badger football games uw athletics has announced home basketball and hockey games we played without fans uw had announced earlier this fall there would be no season tickets for those sports they are working to distribute refunds it has been a long time since many of us have flown on a plane or even stayed in a hotel those two things are directly impacting life in communities surrounding Madison. Gabriella Becerra is in Verona and explains how the hotels there are dealing with the loss of visitors. Gabby? Eric, barricades block anyone from entering the Holiday Inn Express. It typically hosts a lot of business travelers, but it's temporarily closed down due to the economic impacts of the coronavirus pandemic. The Springdale Inn, a bed and breakfast in Verona, is also closed for the season. Its owner tells me that it's just not safe right now to host people in one house together. The Verona Chamber of Commerce Executive Director says the loss of visitors doesn't only affect hotels right now. And our clients not coming for the training it has been a huge loss for our hotel industry here, which then trickles down to our community as well with um, restaurants and bars and grocery stores and gas stations and um, our, local, our local shops, our local merchants. Jordan says the community will rally around its small businesses, but adds that they can only go on for so long like this. I also talked to a local homeowner who lists her house on Verbo and says it's been getting a lot of interest because people are looking for a clean and safe place to stay. But here in Verona, the Fairfield Inn and Suites across the street from this Holiday Inn Express is still open as well as the Hyatt across town. All right, Gabriella Becker live in Verona tonight. Gabby, thank you. Coming up next at 6, the Department of Veterans Affairs is sharing stories of those who served in a virtual format this year. We'll highlight their message on this Veterans Day. I suffered with knee pain for almost four to five years. I wanted to have the conformist after looking at all the different options. I think having the surgery with the ortho team is the only way to go. They all look out for you as a patient. 
Come take a stroll through the Menard's enchanted forest this Christmas season. We have everything you need to deck the halls, create cozy charm with decorative accents and hanging decor. Decorate your tree with dazzling ornaments, garlands, ribbons, and a tree topper. Find it all at Menard's enchanted forest. Merry Christmas from all of us at Menard's. Looks like they finally got rid of that trip hazard. They pump it full of mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Where are the patched holes? Where's the splashed mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Concrete lifting technologies can quickly raise and level any concrete surface using cutting edge foam technology made in Wisconsin. Fast and accurate and eco-friendly. How did those guys do it? Where are the holes? Where's the mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Dot com. Culver's chicken sandwiches are proof that raise right tastes right. I really care about the food we eat, and that all starts here. The chicken that we serve to our kids is grown right here on our farm. It takes growers like yourself to produce these great sandwiches at Culver's. Every bite tastes like chicken is supposed to. This is chicken raised right. Our grilled chicken, our crispy chicken, and our spicy crispy chicken, they are amazing. Welcome to delicious. <laughs> I suffered with knee pain for almost four to five years. I wanted to have the conformist after looking at all the different options. I think having the surgery with the ortho team is the only way to go. They all look out for you as a patient. At six. Despite in-person events being canceled on this Veterans Day, the Wisconsin Department of Veterans Affairs is paying tribute to those who served. Whether you served on the beaches of Europe, in the jungles of Asia, the deserts of the Middle East, or here at home. Wherever you served, we owe you our gratitude today and to every day. Secretary Mary Culler thanked Wisconsin's 350,000 veterans and highlighted several stories, including trailblazers like Marsha Anderson of Beloit, who became the first African-American in the U.S. Army Reserve to attain the rank of Major General. The Department of Veterans Affairs is highlighting more veteran stories in an online tribute. You can find them at wispvetsveteransday.com. The Capitol Building's annual Veterans Day ceremony was canceled this year because of the pandemic, but the sons of Union veterans weren't going to let that stop them from honoring those who have served. Along with the Wisconsin Society of the Sons of the American Revolution, they held an outdoor ceremony to honor veterans. The event was hosted at Forest Hill Cemetery, where both Union and Confederate Civil War soldiers are buried. Veterans Day is very important because we honor the people who gave their lives and they will serve their country throughout the history of the nation. With prayers, a moment of silence, and stories of soldiers, they paid tribute to those who risked their lives for the country. The groups are hopeful that they'll be able to return to the Capitol building once again for next year's Veterans Day. Still ahead at 6, two Middleton High Schoolers are leading the charge to create a new ice rink in town. We'll share why they believe it'll help reduce some stress levels as we head into the winter months. And we're back to normal temperatures for the month of November. After a clear day, Gary has a look at our next chance for showers in your first worn forecast. the holidays with custom gifts from Madison Top Company. Clothing, mugs, ornaments, and more. Ready as fast as one hour with their lightning service. Buy local with fast, custom-printed gifts at madisontop.com since 1974. Let us help you create your family's recipe for health. SSM Health and News 3 Now are making it easy by putting all the ingredients right at your fingertips. With topics like healthy habits, nutrition, and mental well-being, there's something for everyone. Visit Channel 3000's Time for Kids page for advice from SSM Health experts. And catch fresh and informative reports on News 3 Now. Take time for kids with SSM Health and News 3 Now. Habitat for Humanity of Dane County continues to help hardworking families attain home ownership. By providing financial coaching, homeowners can manage their mortgage and other finances while building stability for their family. Strengthen our community. Support Habitat Dane County. Get more home for the holidays now with the Brothers Main Black Friday is Today sale. 
Shop online or safely in store to get up to 38% off and up to $2,000 back on qualifying GE Cafe and GE Profile appliances. Check out our Hot Point Top Load Washer and Dryer. Buy the pair and pay only $4.49 each. This is your Black Friday store for more, including free delivery. The Black Friday is today's sale. Hurry in today for more selection, more savings, and more home for the holidays from the Brothers Maine, your local store for more since 1938. This year, heroes have come in all shapes and sizes. From those on the front lines to those in the back rooms and classrooms, wherever they may be. Steinhoffels would like to say thank you to all of those making a difference in our community. Now through Saturday, Steinhoffels is giving everyone an additional 5% savings to show our appreciation. It's our way of saying thank you to heroes everywhere. How to change the way you pizza. Step one, grab a delicious Papa Murphy's pizza. Step two, bake. Step three, chow down on the deliciousness. Right now, get the cheeseburger pizza for just $10. Papa Murphy's. Celebrate the holidays with custom gifts from Madison Top Company. Clothing, mugs, ornaments, and more. Ready as fast as one hour with their lightning service. Buy local with fast, custom printed gifts at madisontop.com since 1974. Winter isn't going to force people in Middleton to just huddle inside for months on end. That's thanks to two high schoolers. The community has something fun to look forward to in about a month. And our Jamie Perez shows us how those students learned a thing or two in the process. For these two high school seniors, the last four years have been fueled by being on the ice. A lot of things I've gained in my life has been through sports, especially hockey. Um, there's been a lot of stuff I've had to kind of overcome and um, hockey's been a great de-stressor. But Sean Rooley and Spencer Kalsher's hockey team's events and games were canceled, which got them to thinking. You know, might as well go big or go home. These two are leading an effort to put in two big sheets of ice for a makeshift ice rink for the team. But that crystallized into an even bigger plan. We're not always going to be on them. So why not let other people, you know, join join in and learn how to skate? In about a month, this section of Penny Klein Park will look something like this for the entire community to enjoy. Uh, it's been really fun to watch how much they want other people to enjoy the ice. They set up a GoFundMe page with the help of their team's volunteer leader, Steve Chafe, to make it happen. The community has helped them raise about two-thirds of their $15,000 goal so far, and the city is on board, too. I mean, anytime we see an effort like this where the community's got a great idea and is willing to put you know, the work in, it, it makes it a lot easier for us from an approval standpoint and for us to get behind when when there's community support for an effort like this. The fire department agreed to supply the water and supplies in cold weather are on their way too. This will be an opportunity for everyone to, you know, get out and we can, you know, social distance and be within the COVID regulations and, you know, get some exercise and have some fun, and get people together. Turning their community into a new team and showing these boys that sometimes you just need to take your shot. I think I've gained a lot of uh, people skills from it. I think I've learned a lot of things I wouldn't have through school and other things, just real life situations that I've experienced and I've gained so much from it. It's unbelievable. In Middleton, I'm Jamie Perez, News 3 Now. And if you'd like to help them reach their fundraising goal, we have a link to their GoFundMe at channel3000.com. The boys plan to donate any money they don't use to the nonprofit Middleton Youth Hockey Association. Let's turn to our first one forecast. Here is Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary. Well, today our temperatures are back closer to normal after seeing six straight days with temperatures either at record, at or above record high temperature levels or very close to them. And that kind of goes along with the pattern of climate change. Uh, this is from our friends over at Climate Center showing which season of the year is warming the fastest across the country. And you can see pretty much in the eastern two-thirds of the nation and into uh, the Rockies, it's either the fall or the winter that's warming up the most. Only the west coast seeing the warming most gra uh, great in the spring or in the summer. And here in Wisconsin, uh, you can see <laughs> pretty dramatically that winter is warming the fastest. This is data since 1970 through last year. And you see our winters have averaged across the state almost four degrees uh, 
uh, warmer over that 50-year uh, time period uh, during uh, the winter months. But fall, not too far behind. Our falls have warmed by about 2.5 degrees, and what we saw the last week or so is pretty much evidence of that. Spring and summer, a more gradual uh, increase, only about a 1 degree increase over the last 50 years. The tropics also unusually active. In fact, this is a record year for the most number of tropical weather systems, another sign of climate change. You see Tropical Storm Theta, that was the 29th named uh, tropical storm or hurricane in the Atlantic Basin. That is a record for any year. And you can see Tropical Storm Ada getting ready to move into Florida and the potential for another system to develop sometime over the next couple of days over the Caribbean. Ada right now just to the west of uh, Tampa, Florida, maximum sustained winds 70 miles an hour with gusts to 85 miles per hour. It'll cross the state as a tropical storm and then probably weaken into a tropical depression as it moves out into the Atlantic Ocean in the next few days. Around here, three things you need to know. Sunshine for tomorrow as well. A pleasant day. High temperatures in the lower 50s. We'll see a rain or snow shower chance tomorrow evening as a cold front comes through, and that'll drop temperatures back down into the upper 30s for Friday. Then some rain showers are on the way for the weekend. On weather track, you can see right now things pretty quiet across the state. We have a, a southwesterly wind flow aloft that's keeping the bulk of the cold air farther to our north and to our west. There's Ada getting ready to move into Florida. But much of the country right now pretty quiet. As we uh, zoom back into the Midwest, you can see the next little weather system here with a warm front and a cold front. In between, temperatures have been a little milder there, although right now that the sun has gone down, temperatures are pretty uniform across the Midwest, mainly in the 30s, but you can see some 40s out across Iowa. We'll probably see our temperatures reach the lower 50s tomorrow before that cold front comes through and drops our temperatures. Compared to yesterday, though, our temperatures are down about 15 to 20 degrees farther out to the west. Those temperatures have been warming up. So on future track, look for generally clear skies overnight and partly sunny skies tomorrow. Here comes that rain snow shower chance tomorrow evening. We clear out for tomorrow night and we're back to sunshine for Friday, but again, it'll be a colder day. Our forecast for tomorrow calls for a high of 52 degrees under partly sunny skies, so a pleasant day by mid-November standards and the 7 to 10 day forecast. We drop back down to 38 on Friday. Saturday up to 46, we'll see some afternoon rain showers that will continue into Sunday when it'll be windy. Much of next week should be dry, temperatures within a few degrees of normal. And coming up in sports with kickoff approaching, who will be playing for the Badgers on Saturday? Jim Leonard sort of shares the answers. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Hey, call again. Our water makes my skin and hair feel like I'm 90. How do you feel about high-efficiency water softeners from Culligan Water? What? How do you feel about smoother skin and luxurious hair? I feel very good about that. That's the power of water. Fry Construction is celebrating their 25-year anniversary, which means big savings on home repairs and improvements. No job is too small or too big, and your safety is always our concern. Respected in the industry and voted best of Madison, Fry Construction delivers lasting quality for your home. And now, for a limited time, save 25% off gutters or insulation with a full roof, siding, or window project, all with zero down. 0% 0 interest for 12 months. Contact Fry Construction today. Four days only. It's Black Friday now at Grand Appliance. November 11th through November 14th, get up to $800 in extra savings on top appliance brands exclusively at Grand. Shop in store or online at grandappliance.com for offers like this Samsung front load lawn repair with steam for just $11.96 after rebate savings. For unbeatable appliance deals without the crowds or holiday interruptions, shop the Black Friday now sale exclusively at Grand Appliance. If you live in Wisconsin and don't have dental insurance, listen to this important message. I know how important it is for my patients to maintain their dental health. That's why I'm so pleased Delta Dental has plans for individuals and families designed to fit your budget. Your dentist may already be part of our network. You'll have a choice of Delta Dental individual and family plans that cover exams, cleanings, fillings, crowns, and more. So call now. Call 844-SMILE-15. That's 844-SMILE-15.
two weeks until Thanksgiving. The possibility of lots of people traveling has health officials concerned. We'll talk with local doctors to see what they think about those Thanksgiving plans. We'll see you starting at 4.30. team is three days away from playing their first football game since kicking off the Big Ten season on October 23rd. Now the only problem, we don't know who's going to actually be out there playing on Saturday. The depth chart shows no changes since week one, but that doesn't help because once a player tests positive, they're out 21 days. But according to Jim Leonard, his defense will be playing at full strength against Michigan. We will do our best to make sure there's 11 people on the field every play. So uh, I think in hockey, that's called full strength. We're blessed. We're fortunate to have good depth on the defensive side of the ball this year. So um, it's not a situation where we get to one position and all of a sudden you're like, wow, like we're, we're running out of bodies. I promise you as coaches, we will do our best to be at full strength, meaning we will have 11 players on the field. In other Big Ten news, Saturday's Ohio State-Maryland game has been canceled due to elevated COVID cases in the Terrapin football program. The Terps have had eight players test positive over the last seven days. This game, like any Big Ten game that are canceled, this season will not be rescheduled. The worst team in the NFL besides the winless Jets is the one-win Jacksonville Jaguars. After starting their year with a win, the Jags enter Sunday on a seven-game losing streak. Meanwhile, the Packers are viewed by some as one of the best teams in the league. So it's easy to overlook a struggling team. Well, that is unless you're Matt LaFleur, who has his team focused on themselves and playing up to the standards they've set. One thing that's always important for us is, is we kind of keep the focus on ourselves and d making sure that we're playing up to the standards uh, that we have set for ourselves. And I don't care who you're playing, when you're playing, where you're playing, um, you, you have got to uphold that standard. Mark Johnson named his captains for the upcoming season, and the UW women's head hockey coach has given Brett Pettit and Grace Boley the task of leading the top-ranked Badgers on and off the ice this year. And the honor is exciting for them, but it's also a little challenging. This year has definitely thrown uh, a lot of unexpected things at us. So, I mean, unfortunately, we don't have a year like this to go off of and, and learn from. So we're kind of taking it as it goes. But I think the biggest thing for us is just to keep our eye on the goal. Goal as in stay safe. And That's the number one priority. And everybody's trying to do their best. All right, thank you, Zach. Here's Gary with the final check. Well, right now, temperatures are in the 30s through much of southern Wisconsin. Madison still hanging on at 40 degrees, but look for clear skies overnight. Low temperatures by morning down to around 30. Tomorrow should be partly sunny and pleasant with a high temperature of 52. Now, we could see a rain or snow shower chance tomorrow evening. For, thir uh, for Friday, we're back down to 38 degrees. Some rain over the weekend, a little colder for the start of next week, and then warming back up toward the end of next week. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News Now at 6. Have a great evening and we'll see you back here at 10.